Welcome back. One final point before we go. Yesterday, Teen Vogue dropped a tweet that read, can't end poverty without ending capitalism. The article linked in that tweet pushed socialism. Surprise, surprise. So what did I do when I saw this stupid tweet? Well, I visited Teen Vogue's website, and this is what I saw. An article about Netflix, another article about the Victoria's Secret fashion show, and another article about the flu shot. And I thought to myself, well, those are products and innovations. Were they made, were they invented in a socialist country or a capitalist country? This is not a rhetorical question. My question to Teen Vogue and anybody who reads Teen Vogue, where was Netflix? Where was Victoria's Secret? Where was the flu shot invented? That's right, in a capitalistic economy. Without the incentive to make money, people don't invent things, because why would they? In fact, Teen Vogue itself, you're a magazine, I'm sorry, don't you literally stay in business because you sell a useless product to consumers based on supply and demand in a free market economy. And that's how you make your money. That's called capitalism. So let me tell you about socialism, which is what you're trying to push. When you're hungry, do you want to get takeout from Uber Eats? Or do you want to stand and wait in line for three hours for one loaf of bread? When you're sick, do you want to call your 24-hour pharmacy and pick up the antibiotics at the CVS one block away from your house and pay maybe 20 bucks for it? Or do you want your infection to get so bad that you have to go to the hospital? And the only reason you end up getting antibiotics is because the boy in the hospital room next door, he died and his mom gave you his leftover antibiotics. When you're on social media, invented by capitalism, by the way, do you want to post that selfie on Instagram with your Feel the Burn sticker or your Make America Great Again hat? Or do you want the government to literally shoot you dead in the streets because you dared to share your political beliefs? That's capitalism versus socialism. It's also liberty versus oppression. So let's talk about poverty. In the year 1820, that's just 200 years ago, 94% of the world's population lived in poverty. By 2011, that's 191 years later, only 17% of the world's population lived in poverty. So you gotta ask yourself, well, what changed between 1820 and 2011? The Industrial Revolution and the onset of global trade, free trade, also known as capitalism. Let's look at the numbers. Thanks in part to the capacity to trade freely in capitalistic countries like the United States of America, from 2001 to 2011, nearly 700 million people around the world exited poverty. On the other hand, in the 20th century, as 700 million people exited poverty thanks to capitalism, over 100 million people worldwide were killed as a result of communism and socialism. You know what that means as well as I do. Capitalistic free market economies lifted more people out of poverty in the 20th century than any other economic system in the history of the world. So if you truly want to end poverty, then you should celebrate capitalism. And that's my final point. You can reach me on Twitter at Liz underscore Wheeler. If you liked the show, please send me an email at oann.com slash contact. In the, mean, in the meantime, catch us here tomorrow after the Trump rally. And until then, have a good night. Want to see more videos like this? Click on the link below and subscribe to One America News on YouTube and call your cable provider and kindly demand that One America News is added to your lineup. Call and subscribe today.